Welcome back to the channel. This welcome. week, <laughs> welcome, welcome. This week's video is about electricity. Yes. We are receiving a lot of questions about our electrical setup, and we're going to be telling you all about it today. Now, it is not a super complex, uh, you know, scientific. I went to MIT kind of video. It is a simple go-to how to understand and plan your electricity for your project. We are making it very user-friendly. It's like a dummy 101 book on electrical in a van. And again, there are many ways to set up an electrical system in a camper van, and we're just showing you the way we do it, the way we've done it in the past five or eight vans your dad has built. And it works very well with our needs, so we're just gonna be showing you our ticks and trips. Your ticks and trips. <laughs> our ticks and trips, our tips and tricks on camper van electrical setups. Yes, so follow us on Electric Avenue. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Hi, we're Dom and Marie. We are building our second van. And today, let's talk about electricity. Number one thing that you need to figure out when you're planning your electrical setup is what you will need in your van. You need to list all the things that will require energy so you can calculate properly the number of watts on your solar panels if you need a solar panel and the number of batteries. Don't be fooled by those people online telling you they have a thousand watt of solar panel on their roof and that they draw like thousands of amp hours a day. If you don't have a good idea of what you really are using yeah. as electricity in a day, you don't really know how many watts you need on your van and how many amp hours you need in your battery bank. So that's exactly what we did. So I have this graph here that we will be putting on screen. So Dom and I listed everything, every single little thing that will require energy. And we also listed the amount of time or the use we will we will do in a day or in a week mm -hmm. and the amp hour as well. So just to name a few, we have two MacBook Pros that we use eight hours per day, an iPad Pro that we use eight hours per day, and then we have all the batteries that I'm not gonna list here, but we have this Dometic fridge, 24 hours a day, the Max Air fan, the S-Bar heater, the pump, the puck lights, the magic bullet, the inverter charger, our Sonos speaker, our shower pump, our echo temp heater. So you need to list all those components. You need to determine how many time or how much you will use them in a day and their power draw mm -hmm. and that will give you a total our total when we use all of this together now that's obviously that's the maximum but when we use all of this in the same day it's around 500 amp hours daily so we know our setup needs to fuel or power 500 amp hours on a daily basis in the worst case scenario in the worst because case scenario. you always want to calculate your worst case scenario so for example all what marie listed is full charge 100% of the time. It's, it's never gonna happen. It's never it's gonna rarely happen. rarely gonna happen, but we still needed to list the worst care scenario just to make sure mm -hmm. our we batteries and, or our setup would be sufficient when needed. Yes. So that is something that you need to do. List all those components online. There are many, many graphs that allow you to enter all the things you will need, calculate the amp hours, and it'll give you the total far out ride is a very good reference. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be putting the link to that below, but you can use their graph and their table mm -hmm. to calculate what you really need. Delivery! Oh, keep them coming. Last one. Last one. Nice. Oh, what is that, Papa? Is it Christmas? It is Christmas. Oh, Tabernucci. Can you explain to our friends why everything is like here? The toughest part is to make it the most compact possible. So here we're using the fact that you know, there's a wheel well under that. Oh. We'd like to maximize around it. Obviously the weight, if it's on the wheels, is going to be better than if it's at one end or the other. So we're maximizing on the wheels here. Uh, you want it very tight because when you connect, you know, 200 amps, 400 amps, 600 amps, you want your wiring to be as short as possible. And as you can see, these are big wires to deal with that kind of power. So everything tight, everything short wire, and uh, it makes a, a very effective system. Uh, the placement varies on your layout. I, what kind of bed you're gonna have, what kind of uh, cabinets you're gonna have. The recipe varies also on doing the weight distribution for your van. Oh, clever. Because 
Uh, this might be lithium battery, but there's already six of them, so you're nearing 200 pounds of stuff right here. Obviously, with that type of thing, it's not always sunny, so we're gonna go with the inverter charger. There's one there that's probably the most complete one in terms of uh, what it can do, uh, and we can talk about that later. You need to take that power and distribute it. There's a bunch of ways to do that. So the power is gonna go from here into the inverter charger, get into the distribution center, and go to all the components that we need to take into account. So there's a lot of things, and you know, we can go into details about every one, about every one of these components. But uh, there's so many resources online on how to choose an in inverter charger, how to choose a solar uh, controller, how to choose a B2B, there's many options out there. People have to do their own work and take a look at what they need. So once everything is in place, is it going to be out in the open in the garage or how are you going to close no, 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 no. it? You can't do that. First of all, it needs to be protected. You don't want water, you don't want dust, you don't want sand, you don't want stuff in there. And at the same time, it needs to vent. Space. Venting, space, grills, whatever around here. This is your distribution center, your fuse center, which is going to be on the door right here. And all your fuses are going to be accessible here. And your breakers are going to be right here. You only have to do this. Ooh. And all your stuff is, your, your breakers are going to be right there. And your fuses are going to be right here. You have a you have a full fuse box for your van, baby. So no more opening the opening the, the seat, the, big... the, the seat and wow. the big box. Everything is going to be right there. Where did you get this? Amazon? Uh, yes, I did. We're going to be putting the link to this because people are going to want to buy this. Trust me. Perfect. For that. Anyway, we let's head to the roof so we can figure out where we put the solar panel. This was found. Now again I'm lost. Papa, yeah. what did I tell you? Stop writing on my furniture. Let's talk about the ways to recharge your house batteries that you install in your conversion. Your battery bank. Three ways to recharge them. One being... The most popular one would be the solar panel. The sun. You can use the sun to recharge your battery bank with solar panel. However, yeah. if you live in a place like Canada, it's only sunny a couple of dozen of days a year. Well, so you can't... More than that, but... <laughs> It's not Arizona. You can't, yeah, you can't rely 100% on the solar panels to recharge your battery bank to a 100%. So there's another option, and that other option is the alternator or the battery of the car. How does that work? Your car generates electricity to power itself when you drive. You can use that electricity to send it in your battery bank in the back of the van with what we call an isolator but you can read on that if you google isolator so that's very nice because when we're driving around in vanessa nessa we are basically recharging our battery bank right third option the third option would be the shore power the shore power is a fancy name to say <laughs> plug your van in a wall and let your battery take full charge it's basically the same system as when you're plugging an appliance it's just that your uh, char inverter charger that you will install will dispatch the electricity from your house or from your campground in your battery bank. Now, even though Dom and I don't sleep in campgrounds a lot, we're mostly, you know, off grid, we do have a shore power. It's super cheap, super easy to install, but it's just a very nice tool or a very nice setup to have if you're, say, in a campground or parked in a friend's parking. It's just easy, efficient, mm -hmm. and it's good. It's worth it. It's worth it, but it's yeah. also very good from time to time to recharge those batteries completely. And the shore power is just a very quick and effective way. So three so options, sun, alternator, and shore power. This is how we stay alive. Do you need all three? It really depends on your need. We have all three just in case one of them isn't working or... Fails. Or fails. Yeah. So really up to you. A few things to know about solar panels. People often ask, how many solar panels do you have on your van? The question should be, how many watts do you have on your solar panels? Usually the way you estimate is 200 watts per 100 amp hour of battery. So in our case, that would mean we would need around 1000 watts on our solar panels. Do we need all this? No. Why? Because we have other ways to recharge the batteries. We mentioned the alternator and we mentioned the shore power as well. So solar panels are measured in watts and you don't need to 
think of how many solar panels you need, you need to figure out how many watts you need. Second thing you need to take in consideration is the roof real estate, where you will install them. In our case, we have one fan and we have the paddle boards on the side. So we knew we had to put solar panels in front and on the side. You also need to figure out shading or paddle boards when they're one on top of the other, they're probably what, like one feet high? And the paddle boards being one feet high will cast a little shadow on the cell. Remember that blocking one cell on your solar panel can bring the output to zero. So you need to figure out that shading and that's why we will have one solar panel in front and the other not right beside the paddle boards, but a little to the side so even if there's a shadow casting it will not change the output so figure out how many watts you need the real estate of your roof think of the shading but think of the other thing you'll be putting on your roof as well don't you sing those blues don't you sing those silly blues cause it's solar panel time and we are going to try to figure out where we're going to be putting them on the Rats at what, 200 watt, 210? Whoa. Oh, wow. Well, I know where this one's going to go. That's it, I can't put it on the same way. You can put it on the... Oh, no, I take the escabeau. Now, what's going to be tricky is figuring out where to put them, taking in consideration the paddle boards. My game plan is making sure the paddle boards are still accessible, making sure we don't have to step on the solar panels to take the paddle boards down and making sure that paddle boards don't cast a shadow on them. Right? Yeah. Nice rack. Well, honey child, face up to it. You tried, but you didn't win. Don't, don't you look at me like the world's coming to an end. Cause I, I know as well as you that I love. So that's exactly what it's going to be. We're gonna have one 210 watts in the front, one 210 on the side. We don't need much more, and we wouldn't have the space, the space for more because we're gonna have the paddle boards on this side. I think we figured it out. That was easy. I thought it was gonna be more complicated. In the recent years, you probably heard the word lithium quite a lot. If you have an old car or a regular car, you have AGM batteries in your car. If you have a Tesla or if you're outfitting a van, you can have lithium batteries now. The reason why we went with Battleborn lithium batteries is pretty simple. First, they are very light. I thought I could train with those because I was used to AGM batteries being super heavy, but these are probably one third of the weight of an AGM battery. Um, the second reason why we went with this lithium battery bank is because we can use 100% of its discharge capacity. Meaning, when this is at 100%, I know I can use 100% of its charge, while it's not the case with AGM batteries. AGM batteries, because of the way they are built, are only usable to 50% of its discharge capacity. Meaning that when you have 100 amp hour of, of AGM battery, you can only use 50 amp hour out of it. The third reason why we use lithium batteries is because they have more life cycles than the AGM batteries. The lithium batteries we have here have 3000 cycles, as the AGM batteries we had before only had 1200. So it's basically the double of life cycles that you have in a lithium batteries versus an AGM battery. A lot of people are gonna say, well, have you thought of the weather? Have you thought of the cold? Because lithium batteries are more fragile when you're talking about extreme temperatures. Lithium batteries need a little more care regarding extreme temperature variations. For example, an AGM battery can output its energy pretty much in any scenario. A lithium battery, if you are too hot or if you're too cold, you're gonna feel like the charge is going up and down. Um, so it's important to take care of your lithium batteries because they can discharge pretty much in any scenario, but you can't recharge them if the battery is under zero degrees. So we are going, we are going to need ventilation and heating to take care of that battery bank because in Canada, in winter, we won't be able to use it if the weather reaches 
zero and down. People will also tell us that lithium battery banks are way more expensive than AGM battery banks. And they are right, but we have to take into consideration that they last longer and that you can use them to 100% of their capacity. So the buying price is higher, but you will buy less battery in the long run. So I'd say the price is pretty much the same. So we really hope you like this video on electricity and van electrical setups. Um, when Dom and I were first looking at converting our first van, Vanessa, we were looking at every single video on electrical setups and we found it very, very hard to understand. So we just wanted to make this one as simple as it is. We're going to be putting a lot of links in the description below and they are more into the details. So mm -hmm. and don't worry, electrical work is a daunting task. It's a mystery for us. Even today, we're like, oh, really, is it going to work, et cetera, et cetera. And um, just do your homeworks. Uh, start with what Marie told you to do. List your power draws, list your uh, electricity needs. Yeah. Start figuring your electrical plan, but in the end, it's always a good idea to ask an electrician what they think about what you're doing and maybe uh, get some help from them to plug it in your van. Truth is, in our province, it's even illegal for us to do it ourselves, so we always have someone who checks it and makes sure all the connection and mm -hmm. wires are in properly. That's it for the electrical video. If you have questions, don't hesitate to ask uh, us below because we answer basically everything. And next week, uh, well, I I can't talk about it now because well, Marie, well, because Marie doesn't know about it yet, so she will... You're not pranking me again. No, you're not pranking me, dude. <laughs> it's not a prank. It's technically not something you can be stressed about, oh, but it, it can be considered as a prank. <laughs> no, you're not blowing the van or you're not injuring the van or myself or yourself. I'm not injuring the van. <laughs> yeah. I can't, I just can't tell you what it is. So see you next week for our 52nd video. A year of video. Isn't there 54 weeks in a year? 52 weeks. Oh, I like it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> French Les Sun and Amber 2000. J'ai chaud. I am hot. This is a short but a sneaky sentence, so listen carefully. J is for I am. A chaud is for hot. But beware, because this means I have hot. Because you could also say, je suis chaud, I am hot. But in French, depending on the country you are visiting, it means several things. It means, I am in favor, it means, I am drunk, and it means, I am sexy. So there is an awkward potential times 3000, depending on who you talk to. So uh, this week you have a homework. In order to help you uh, understand which is which, I want you to make a sentence with, j'ai chaud, parce que, I am hot because and je suis chaud parce que I am hot because mm, let's practice together. Je suis chaud. I am hot. <laughs>